Hello, Chris at e Pianos here. Uh, this is in answer to James R.B. on YouTube who sent us this question about uh, Piano Room on DGX 670. Um, I promised I would take a, a bit of a deep dive into Piano Room and show what it was for, so that's what I'm going to do now. Um, first of all, Piano Room, what is it? Um, I think of Piano Room as the emergency just go back to piano button. There's loads of functions on DGX670. If you hit this button here on the front panel uh, that is shaped, funnily enough, like a piano, then this will always take you directly back to just playing a piano. I love the simplicity of Piano Room. It's far more than just an emergency back to piano button. It does, in fact, if you look at the screen now, give you this very nice color display of the piano you're playing. It's, it's a pretty basic selection, but it's just for if you just want to play piano. All the other lights you'll notice on the front panel have now gone off. So it's just the screen that's illuminated. And as it stands, it's Yamaha Concert Grand and I can play. This is what it sounds like. But come back over to the screen and have a look what else we can do here in Piano Room. Um, firstly, on the left here, we can choose different types of piano. So as I go through, just stay here on the screen and I'll show you. The piano type now is the Pop Grand. And you'll notice straight away that that's a little bit brighter version of the piano. As I go through the list here, we get things like honky tonk piano, and we have uh, the suitcase pianos, and vintage pianos. to piano. Now some of the other things you can do on here are things like moving the position of the lid of the piano which does have quite a change in the tone. As I put it into half position, actually go back to full and have a listen. Move it to half and all the way closed. again. So with the lid position open it's quite resonant and quite trebly. Move it all the way to closed. And it changes the tone altogether. We can also change the environment that we play in as well. This is a concert hall but if I move it downwards, we change to cathedral. I'm just going to open the lid up again and listen to the reverb change. Imagine there's a grand piano in a cathedral as we see here. One hit on the keys. And you hear that aftertouch. way to play and we've got more environments as well stage environments which just reduce the echo a little bit I might decide to play uh, a pop grand Uh, room in 
environment here. This again is just reducing the echo. Might change back to the grand piano, bring the lid closed. Come back over to the screen and let me show you that there are more settings in here too, as well as the environments of which the other one was just off, which takes away all reverb and gives you just the dry piano sound. Um, if I put it, if I go into the settings here on the right hand side, this brings up four different options here as well, one of which is the master tune, which you can alter if you need to. Um, by the way, if you need to put it back, into regular tuning, which is 440, you just press these up and down buttons together and that will take it back to the regular tuning, just in case you think you've messed around with it too much. But the tuning is useful if you are tuning your piano to an old instrument, like a violin or a cello or a different piano or a guitar that isn't quite in perfect pitch. Uh, the brightness, this is useful. I can take the brightness right down to, well, I'm just going to have to wait and see how far this goes, but essentially this is just going to take away the brightness of the piano. So I'm playing now, and as I go up, it's playing up on a C scale here, normal brightness. I can tailor it really to suit the sound that I like. Um, the touch, this is a really, really practical one on here because this allows me to adjust the piano's touch sensitivity to my own playing. Note that it's not going to make a difference to how the keys feel, it makes a difference to how the sound reacts to your playing. Now I'm quite a heavy handed player as you probably noticed, so I like to put my setting on hard two. The, there are these many settings in total, um, soft two, soft one, medium, hard one, hard two. Now what hard two means, um, if I show you on the keys here, is it will take me quite a lot of effort now to play a note and get to um, a certain volume. And because I'm quite heavy handed, I find that having it on hard two is quite handy because I find it's a little bit more forgiving for your playing. However, if you're a beginner and you might be a little bit more timid on the keys, or indeed if you have more grace with your playing than I do, which you probably do, then you can change it. You can have it onto something like soft two. Uh, this has the opposite effect because now on the keys, I hardly need to play them to get to a certain volume. I'm only lightly pressing the keys now and I find that I barely have to play to get the volume quite high. Um, there are other options, soft one and hard one as well. Medium setting is the standard setting and that will probably suit most people, but it's just really handy to be able to tweak that. Uh, virtual resonance modeling, modeling uh, VRM on here. This is this clever technology that Yamaha do very well where when you play a note on a, p on a digital piano, they've recorded from the original piano they sampled from, not just the strings that the hammer plays, but the surrounding strings as well. And that's how you get that lovely sympathetic resonance from the other strings. And it's what gives Yamaha digital pianos the, this really authentic feel to them. So you can't, it's hard to sort of say, listen to this and listen to, that happening because the effect is subtle. Particularly when you play headphones, you do, you can really get immersed in there and you can hear the sound swelling around as if you're stood in front, uh, sat in front of a nine foot concert grand and the sound is swelling all around the piano. The virtual resonance modeling is 
what gives it that lovely swelling noise. So there you go. If you've got any more questions whatsoever on DGX670, just leave them in the comment section below and we will try and do a video to answer your question. Thanks very much for watching. I hope that was helpful. James and everyone else watching, take care.